other people. Yes, I'm back. Hopefully, this is in black and white. Yes, I'm doing another one of the photo inspiration collaborations with Angie from 4F Beauty. Yes, these are fun. Special little thing. Angie let me get away with something. The picture that got picked this time, since it was my turn to pick, is a piece of my artwork. You'll probably hear a little more about it in the rest of the vid. But, let's go see what we do with the picture. Come on, Angie. Time to go play. Hello. Welcome back from hopefully a black and white introduction. Um, now, in the introduction, I probably mentioned that, and if I didn't, I'll mention it now. Anyway, the picture that I got to pick out, since it was my turn to pick, is one that I created. Now, it's computer artwork. Yes. I used two different programs, melded the pieces together, and then we have image. I named it Sunlight Dancing on Stone. There's also a secondary one called Sunlight Dancing on Water. Different pose. She's standing more on water instead of up on a rock. I've also got a few others. A couple of them are very science, science fiction-y. They changed the programs, though. I liked the simple version of the programs that I had played with. <clears throat> Excuse me. Knowing computer graphics people, they like to change things up. My husband was learning to use the graphics programs. We were both working, kind of haphazardly working, with a publishing company called Mystic Station Designs that was making supplements, gaming supplements, for a tabletop paper and dice game called Chivalry and Sorcery. And we were doing, literally, modules and um, additional information packets, that kind of thing. They had these programs. I tinkered. Since that time, the one of the owners has passed away, and Mystic Station is no longer precisely in business, the, the remaining partner is still doing some stuff, but not nearly on the scale that they had been, so. But this is still one of the pieces that I dearly love. It's just, it's bright and it's colorful. And even though there's not a lot to it, yeah, I keep looking at the computer because I've got the picture on my monitor. Um, even though there's not a lot of elements to it, there's a lot of color. And I liked playing with minimalist stuff. I've also had a habit of working with watercolors with little tiny brushes and doing little tiny pictures. So that's where this kind of came from, is that habit. Anyway. I got to pick. Angie said yes. So, let's try and see if I can't put some of this color on my eyes with the colors I actually own. Computer aided colors are a whole nother ball of beans, you know. Some of them are, are pretty intense. That uh, malachite green is pretty intense.
Oh, there goes the doggy. It's it's one of those things. Oops. My husband is trying to convince the doggy to come to him so he can pet the doggy and tell the doggy to shush. <laughs> Alright, that was my AOA studio. Favorite base. That's the AOA Wonder Cover in white. Now, I love this stuff. It works wonderfully. And I'm going to remind you again, if you go to shop AOA, no, I am not sponsored by any means. This is a dollar. I've still not come anywhere close to running out, and I use it all the time. I especially use it if I'm working with bright colors that I really want to have pop. And like the picture shows, that's a lot of bright color in some cases. And just run this right under my eye just a little bit. Now I've been trying to think of what I'm going to do to try to work with these colors. And especially that very intense brassy gold and I've got a couple of things I'm going to work with to try to make those work. I've got this color it's a palette from a company called T TZ Cosmetics and Cosmetics is spelled with an X at the end. Now these look like really intense colors, but they're actually closer to being copper. I had originally picked this up back early part of February, March, because I was starting to think about what I was going to do for um, Mardi Gras. I'm looking at this and going yellow, green, purple. Perfect! It's all toppers. It's a little palette that I picked up off of Amazon for like four bucks. Now the yellow one's kind of tore up when I, first, when I first got it in from Amazon. That yellow one was busted all the heck and I did the alcohol trick and repressed it. The other one I'm going to use is from LA Colors. It's one of these little pots you pick up at the dollar store and it's a loose metallic pigment, which has also got kind of that brassy kind of yellow color to it. For the rock, I've got a couple of things I'm going to work with, one of which is called Drop, and this is from the Bad Habit Aftershock. I'm crossing my fingers. Now, these are a lot of fun. If anybody, anybody, decides they want to try to do a photo inspiration piece or wants to try to use this photo or whichever tag me definitely tag Angie she came up with this bright idea and has been running this series I think this is number 20 in the series now and there's like multiple people doing these looks multiple different types of photographs and eyeshadow looks and all types of things. So yeah, if 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 this makes you a happy person, 
go for it, give it a shot, give it some thought, give it a try. Now, one of the things I want to work on first is the water has a bit of gray to it. So I've got this palette full of grays from BYS. So I'm going to do a little bit of gray and blue for the water. And I'm going to do that first. But I've also got some blues and almost purples in the sky along with the white. So once I've got the kind of grayish water in the lower areas, and I'm going to do the, I'm going to kind of run some of the gray around really, really, really lightly. And I'm going to kind of just drag it a little here and there and that kind of thing because the colors are patchy. The colors are patchy on purpose for the texture. Now, I'm not going to try and recreate the painting. Yes, I call it a painting even though it's, it's computer stuff. Because, well, it is. But I'm not going to try and recreate it. But I do want to give kind of an impression of the scene. With where I try and place my colors. I'm going to try. Nobody says it's going to work. The concept is to try and basically just put an impression. At least my concept. Now, I did one, another one fairly recently where some of the colors I did were kind of muted. So I'm using some of the very, very light touches of color the way I kind of did with that one at least for the first things I'm laying back, laying down. I'm probably going to get a little more intense as we go on. But I'm trying to not go whole hog with the first things I tap on. And some people like to do their dark colors first. Some people like to do their light colors first. When I'm doing something that placement kind of matters as much as the color and the blend, I have a tendency to put placement over color. So, yeah, I'm doing a little tap here and there to put the colors that I want, sort of, where I want them. That BYS palette has got to be some of my favorite grays. I don't do grays a lot, but when I do, that's the palette I've been looking for. Now, I've got in this palette, this is a, a homemade. It's a basic magnetic palette by Beauty Junkies, which is just a blank palette 
that I picked up from Amazon. And most of the colors in there are ColourPop singles. That's all the smaller ones. The larger pan that's in that upper corner is um, from, I think this one, which one was this one? Oh, I've got the thing stuck over it. Anyway, I believe this one is Alien Space Baby from Moods. I think. I think. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Is the Alien Space Baby. No, Alien Love Child. I'll get it in a minute. Alien Love Child from Moods. Hmm. I was thinking about my... I've got a couple of highlighters I was thinking about. I was thinking about how pretty Space Baby would look with some of this. But, I only have Star Island. However, some of my favorite blues are in those ColourPop shadows. And it's another thing I'm just going to kind of tap in, not necessarily create a solid color. Yeah, don't ask me about color names and stuff. I don't really follow them very well. I, I tend to use whatever I have to hand, but... I just kind of went through, when I ordered the ColourPop singles, they were having a sale. <laughs> I love sales. They were having a sale. So I'm ordering some of the ColourPop in the singles. And I'm not really looking at the names of the colors. I'm, I'm looking at the colors. So the names of the colors really don't stick in my head very well. I've got my little homemade color switch here. It's a net ponytail thing, thing it, and a little tin from Dollar Tree. I love dollar stores. The big thing about the stuff I like to do when I'm doing any makeup is I use what I have to hand. I don't worry about having specific product colors based on somebody else's palette that they particularly used. If I've got something that's similar or close, that's what I'm going to use. I don't worry about necessarily matching a whole lot. And that's because it's not going to match anyway. You are doing your own thing. Your eye shape is different. Your coloring is different. What you use for a, for a primer may be completely different. So you can't necessarily expect that your colors are going to be identical. And that's okay. They don't have to be. So 
sometimes you just kind of got to let it go and play with the colors you have and go for it. Now, let's see. The other thing is, I'm not really going for anything very structured. I'm going to put this color here from Aftershock, the Aftershock palette. Let me get my fingers out of the way. This is called Pure. It's Well, pure. It's kind of a dark, dark peacock teal. And the malachite stone that our sunlight dancer is standing on is several different shades of blue-greens. Some of it's very blue, some of it's very green, some of it's dark, some of it's light. So I'm going to start with Plur, which is in fact kind of dark. And again, I'm just kind of tapping it on and bringing it up just a bit above the crease because I have hooded eyes. No, I haven't changed up my brush yet because the brush I'm using suits me just fine. It, it's a little bit large for what I usually do, but like I said, I'm not trying to do anything that's seriously defined or specifically, you know, here, we're only going to put this here, and we're going to have rigid demarcations. And of course, me being me, and my eyes not being even, I've got some interesting shapes going on in here because they're not perfect. You get what you get. Nobody's eyes are identical. My eye looks are never identical for my eye. Do not worry whether or not your eye look is identical. It's not the eye look being identical is not necessarily the point unless you're trying to do something on like a magazine article or something like that and then you don't have to worry about it anyway because the editors are going to Photoshop anyway. Using my little color switch. I'm going to start laying a little more green, a little more tealy green in. And this is Drop from Aftershock. Yes, I'm doing kind of a variant on a halo eye, but I wasn't going to go through all the dancing and prancing and twisting that you have to do 
with a specific cut because it would drive me crazy. I'm not very good at doing the cuts and the concealer lay-ins and that kind of stuff. I'm just not. Part of it is I have very creepy eyes. See all the little wrinkles? And I have hooded eyes. And <clears throat> yeah. And the other thing is, is with crepey eyes like this, you start piling on product, it's not going to help you. Now, from the, yep, Bad Habit White Speed, and this is more so you know, you know, what kind of, if you want to look up the palettes online so you can look at the colors and get a better idea of what color you would like to use if you try this you've got a reference point because without a reference point it makes it a little harder and this, you know, this video is not like a two-second flash on, on some Instagram stuff or TikTok, but it's not necessarily going to be the kind of referen full reference that you need for comparing colors if you're, like, looking for a big swatch of the color to hold up your your own materials near. Or to give you a comparison because some people will go, oh, you're looking for this color. Here, let me show you dupes for this color. And if you don't know which color it is, it makes it harder to check dupe lists. Now, you may find people trying to do a lot of dupes based on things like Bad Habit no longer being in production. Now, I'm pulling this brush after just kind of flutzing around with some of these colors that I've already put on my eye. And this is just kind of a mixture of everything else that's kind of already on the eye that I'm dragging under. And all I've done is use this brush to kind of blend edges here and there. So we're not talking a lot of product. But it's pulling what's already on the eye down and under. and kind of pulling it all together. Now, in this case, I really am going to start looking at 
after I pick up just a little bit of this dark blue called Momentum. I'm right across the lid, just tapping. Uh, momentum is from the light speed palette again. But I'm just going to kind of darken the lid just a little. And pull that slightly darker blue out into the outer corner. Now I'm finally going to put this brush down. This brush came in one of the Ipsy bags. It's a Farrah brush. It's a 22E shade and blend. Now normally I have a tendency to use brushes on my eyelids that are a lot denser packed, which also gives them a much smaller surface because of the hooded eye thing. But I like this brush a lot. It's one of my favorite brushes. So it gets used a lot anyway. Now, back into the Aftershock palette. And I'm going to start by mixing a little bit of sensation no chaser I'm going to mix chaser and electronica just a little bit to put in towards the center of the eye up in here to kind of start giving a bit of that yellow glow and speaking of that densely packed brush. Yeah, Sensation's the pink above Chaser. Don't ask me to read. I've got... I picked up both of those colors and I'm using my little mixing palette down here to kind of tap them together a little better. I'm going to start right there at the edge of that malachite. And I'll start pushing up just a little bit more with more of the yellow as I move up just a bit. And then I'm going to pick up those toppers that I've got. The loose pigment and the TZ Cosmetics. To define this just a little more. And where I get close to the darker colors and the blues, again, I'm just pushing. I'm not trying to blend. And I'm using the combo of the yellow and the orange. Now, granted, the orange is a little peachy, but hey. And I'm pushing the, you know, mixing those together better on the palette so that they're not as streaky and don't look too separate. Right there at the edges. And then where I'm getting more into bare skin, I'm putting more of the yellow down. 
bringing more of the yellow in. Now, some people will probably look at this and go, that's not very wearable. And you know what? Might not be for them. It's definitely intense. The colors are not necessarily perfect for everybody. And for those wondering about the squinting, I don't have glasses on right now. And I don't own contacts. I'm hoping to have some eventually. So it will make it easier for me to see what it is I'm trying to do. However, I don't have them yet. They're not cheap. But yeah, you do all this work on some makeup, you, you kind of want people to see what it is that you're doing and be able to see what you're doing yourself. But you also might want them to be able to see it once you're wearing it so that you've got a better chance of showing off a little. Would I do that? Would I show off in a skinny minute? Now, because I have so little space left at the top because of having hooded eyes, I'm carrying this yellow right on up to my brow line because once I put some of the toppers on, it's going to be pretty shiny. And I think it will be shiny enough without necessarily having to worry about a specific bit of eyebrow highlight. Not every look has to have all of the identical elements. It just doesn't. It is not a requirement. Now, See, when I first started doing makeup when I was much younger, let's not forget, I'm 60. So, yeah, I've earned these creepy eyes. When I started doing makeup when I was much younger, pretty standard to go all the way up to the eyebrow. Pretty standard. And then they started talking more recently about how it's a little more youthful appearing. If you don't go all the way to the eyebrow and, you know, then do that little bit of highlight just under the brow. I get it. I really do. And I appreciate that concept. I really do appreciate that concept. However, it's not what I'm doing today. 
blend this a little better so that we don't have quite so much demarcation. Yeah, I know. The side, the blue-green is a little higher, yada yada. It's the way it is. My eyebrows are not at the same level. My eyes are not at the same level. Perfection is for deities. Now, got my little topper color here. And we will see how this goes. I may not use the LA colors. I may just stick with this. And yes, I'm bringing a little bit of that yellow farther down towards the crease. Because the yellow is supposed to represent the sun statue dancing on the stones. So we need to have a little bit of gold glow on the stone color and in the sky colors. Yes, I know I'm being very, very quiet, but then I'm sitting very close to the camera and microphone today. So, I'm trying not to yell. Now, I just washed these brushes, and let me tell you, I'm going to be washing them again. <laughs> now, where I've got the greeny portion through here, I'm going to take that green topper right here. No, there are no shade names on here. And I'm going to just kind of touch it down through the center here where I have those other greens. Now a lot of these are shimmers and I have not wet even one of them. Not at all. And I don't think I needed to because, again, this is mainly, for my concept, just an impression of color. I do believe it will shine up just a little bit, though, when I spray it on the eye. Yes, I'm adding a little more under the eye with just this sparkly green because it's fun. It's a pretty, pretty color. I'm pretty sure that this was pretty much be meant to be like just like beach colors or something especially since they've got like starfish and 
a shell and the orange one and there's like I think there was a seahorse here. I don't remember what was in the yellow one. But yeah, gotta wash these brushes again. I just washed brushes. I know. Fuss, fuss, fuss. Fuss, fuss, fuss. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to spray my eyes with a little bit of my homemade setting spray. And then I am going to kill the camera for a few minutes and go finish up the whole rest of the face. I may even get uppity and put some jewelry on it. It might happen. No guarantees. are wonderful, wonderful inventions. There was some kind of a protest going on. I think it was in Portland, maybe in Portland. I live in Oregon. I'm never sure. Um, I think it was in Portland, though. There was some kind of protest going on, and the anti-protesters that showed up, there was, in that group, there was a big group of drag queens and to cover the noise of the speech they were trying to make a point about they used their fans and all they did was you get dozens of fans doing this and man it will just wreck your day for noise levels Fans are handy. We have a new language of the fan. And in the hands of a drag queen, honey, she don't need your beads to read you. She'll just snap you straight out with the fan and put you in your place. I think that was probably one of the best counter-protest moves I have ever seen. Absolutely nonviolent. Absolutely delightful. And absolutely so fantastic. Be right back. Okay, everybody. One finished look. Now, I pulled a lipstick from the Flower Group, Drew Barrymore's company. This one is called Naked Blush. And that's kind of going along with that little pinkety blush kind of sandstone and pink stone that's off to the side a little bit. But I used the e. 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 e
cream liner in teal tees with my favorite little bent elf brush to put it on with. I use some basic brown eyeliner um, inexpensive felt tip pen some mascara I did a tight line with the Master Precise Skinny from Maybelline it's, it's one of them little tiny tip gel pencils So I've got a brown tight line, a brown eyeliner, and some mascara. No, I'm not bringing up the particular name because it's stuff I'm trying to use up that I'm having some philosophical issues with. And I, I don't throw my stuff out if it still works. They've already got the money me throwing it out and never using it again is not hurting them any. However, I won't be buying it again and I'm not going to mention their name so they don't get any plug. Anyway, found this on, um, which one was this? This was on ThreadUp, so this is a thrift store piece. Got a couple of pieces that way. This one is fun because it's got a leather lanyard for the for the necklace part that's got a slide on it so you can wear it all the way down, you know, down to your middle pretty much. Or you can go all the way up to choker. See, I've got all this extra string back here. Anyway, yes, I'm checking the monitor, making sure I'm actually in frame. Let me know what you think. Go watch Angie. You need to go watch Angie. If you've never gone to see Angie, you really need to go watch Angie. On top of the fact that this is just a fun kind of collaboration and the photo inspirations are incredible. And yeah, next time we do it, it's her turn to pick. Yes, I'm like raring to go to do it again. I love doing these. This is one of the most fun series I have ever run into. Oh yeah, and because of the little pinky rock, I've got a little pinky stuff in here in the inner corner. But that's the look. Let me know what you think. Please. If you like it, did I get a thumbs up? If you're new here, hang out. This is the fun house. Never can tell what's going to show up on my channel. Go see Angie. Remember, there is no bail money. Be good.